The death toll from the earthquake in Nepal is rising. It has surpassed 6,200 uh, people by Friday. That number is expected to escalate yet further as rescue workers from around the world and cover bodies buried under the, the rubble of uh, last Saturday's quake. In the capital Kathmandu Thursday, rescue workers pulled out two survivors separately. And rescuers first reached a teenage boy and hours later reached a woman in the rubble. Rare moments of joy in the grisly recovery process. Meantime, the United Nations is appealing for 115, rather $415 million to provide shelter, medicine, water and food for the millions affected by the earthquake. What desperately needed aid is finally reaching people in the area closest to the quake's epicenter. Survivors and rescuers are now recounting their experience as Latika Hoke has this story. Crowds cheered Thursday as a teenage boy was pulled alive from the wreckage of a seventh floor building in the capital Kathmandu. Apart from being shocked by the experience, doctors say the boy is well. First I was eating my lunch with my friend and there was an earthquake and I started going downstairs. As I walked, all the walls started to crack and the ceiling fell in. A Nepalese policeman located the boy after hearing a response to his calls. First of all, I knocked there but no response. After calling many times, the boy responded. The young responded to me in my words. Then uh, I confirmed there is a live victim. And then after I started my rescue operation there. It took Nepalese rescuers with support from an American disaster response team about five hours to free the trapped teenager. It's what we call an entombment. So he wasn't specifically crushed, but what he was was inside of a box, a box with, with heavy concrete all around him. So the, the US, USAID teams, uh, what we did is we worked side by side with the local teams and we were there to assist them uh, in getting this victim out. A group of mountaineers got airlifted to safety Thursday after being stranded in a mountain village for five days. Uh, we were just above Namche Bazaar uh, going up to Everest View Hotel and uh, the entire mountain just kind of danced uh, below our feet and we saw two uh, houses cave in in front of us, they were made of stone. And we went to the village and uh, we felt the aftershock also there and people were just in, uh, and, uh, you know, in, in a lot of chaos. Foreign aid continues to pour into Nepal, delivering emergency supplies and personnel, including Including medical teams. I'm looking forward to providing help. I think I'm well prepared. On the other hand, the situation is still not stable on site. There's still a danger of aftershocks. We heard it yesterday again. And then there is the smell of corpses in some areas, which is not too comfortable. So I must say, I have some mixed feelings. Humanitarian aid finally reached some places near the quake's epicenter. Hundreds of Nepalese people have walked for miles from remote and inaccessible areas to this village to find food and shelter. Everything is difficult. Getting food and water is difficult. Oil, salt is difficult. My house is destroyed. I have nothing. It is very hard. Two-thirds of Nepal's population of 27 million are farmers. Much of their seed stocks have been lost in the quake, signaling bleak prospects for this year's sowing season. Slaritsa Hoek, VOA News, Washington. We want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover. Join the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54 and check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com.